Okay, this is now. This is okay. Good morning, Mr. Narula. Good morning. How are you? Very good, very good. Good morning, big guys. Good morning, Patricio. Good morning, Mr. Singh. Very good morning. Hola, Patricio. Good to see you. Good. And my coffee the tomorrow, the morning. Great, great. <laughs> Okay, now I think Raghavan Sahib has also joined. Yeah, we have all the speakers. We can get started. We have all the speakers online. Yeah, good evening. Yeah, sure. so, sorry, I have to re log in. Yeah. Uh, Sadiv ji. Because can you put on mute everyone? Uh, thank you so much for joining us uh, today evening. Uh, a very warm welcome to you. My request to everyone to please uh, stay on mute uh, until uh, you are being called for and uh, please feel free to unmute yourself and speak out as and when uh, you know it's required that uh, we have a uh, let me very quickly introduce you to we have a uh, the session is being moderated by Mr. Sanjeev Keskar and uh, I'll just make a quick introduction. 
Sandeep ji, uh, can we start it now? Yeah, yeah please yes, go ahead. Please, yeah, please go okay. ahead. Please start. Yeah. Okay. Sure, sure. Uh, so, uh, very warm welcome to all of you uh, today evening. Uh, let me very quickly introduce you to the Electronics and Computer Software Export Promotion Council. Uh, we are an uh, industry body uh, sponsored by the Government of India and uh, we are also a registering authority under the Foreign Trade Policy of the Government of India. Uh, there are around 30 export promotion councils and we are one of them catering to the electronics and IT sector. So, uh, we have over uh, 2,300 uh, uh, electronics exporters uh, and IT exporters registered with us as a um, as members, and uh, we do provide uh, financial assistance and uh, execute various schemes of the government of India, and do address any issues that are coming uh, while exporting and uh, while doing any domestic trade and uh, business. So uh, we uh, take them up with the government. So basically, we works as a bridge uh, between the industry and the government. Uh, so, uh, that's a very quick introduction of us and uh, the, the current session is a part of the IoT world that the council is organizing uh, under the chairmanship of uh, Mr. Sandeep Narula. And uh, this is uh, almost a three weeks long uh, event uh, that the council is doing. And uh, just to uh, make sure that uh, our exhibitors are, and members are benefited, we have a very small sessions like uh, the one that we are going to uh, host it today. Uh, thanks to the support of industry stalwarts who is coming forward to share their experience and their insights uh, with the industry uh, members for their benefit. And uh, similarly, we have a series of sessions being planned uh, throughout these three weeks. And uh, uh, it will uh, finally, uh, you know, the mega event would be on the third and fourth, uh, wherein we have targeted uh, the main uh, uh, buyers who are coming to join us. These are the small events and, uh, we, you know, restricted and uh, targeted for a geography, a small geography, wherein a smaller uh, number of uh, people are joining us. But we are looking at the third and fourth event, wherein we expect a larger uh, members. As of now, I think we already have a 450 buyers uh, join and confirmed, registered with us to join us. Thanks to the uh, support uh, from our friends uh, in uh, institutional networks across 45 countries. Patricio is here. He's working, you know, very hard to make sure that uh, our IUT members gets, uh, you know, sufficient number of buyers from Chile. Thank you so much. Uh, we sincerely acknowledge your support, uh, Patricio. And uh, let me now uh, introduce you to our uh, uh, moderator of the session today. We have with us Mr. Sanjeev Keskar. Uh, Sanjeev is the Chief Executive Officer uh, presently of uh, Arvind Consultancy. After his uh, successful stint of 35 years in corporate world, out of which about 29 years in the semiconductor industry, Mr. Kesker incorporated Arvind Consultancy, an advisory firm in the field of developing high-value added ecosystem for the semiconductor and electronics industry in India. Mr. Kesker was MD of Aeroelectronics for last five years. Prior to that, he was the country head of National Semiconductor, AMD, Freescale, Semiconductor and PMC Sera. He is the ex chairman of ISA, Indian Electronics and Semiconductor Association, and also presently hold the post of president of Confederation of Indian MSMEs in Electronics and IT. Very warm welcome to Mr. Keskar to you, and thank you so you much for and thank you so much for uh, uh, agreeing to agreeing to session for organize us. this session for us. Thank you, Mr. Gurmit. Uh, good, uh, good afternoon. Very, good evening. Very, yeah, yeah, Mr. Gurmit. Yeah, just just one uh, ending. Uh, uh, ending. Uh, yeah. Uh, then we have uh, with uh, us we the industry uh, stalwarts. Industry stalwarts. Uh, Sanjeevji, I think you need uh, to. Sanjeevji, I think you need to mute. Thank you. So we have with us the industry stalwarts today who are going to share their insight and opportunities with us. Although Mr. Keskar, Keskar will uh, make a, a formal introduction of our esteemed panelists, let me quickly welcome uh, Mr. Sandeep Nula, CEO Atlanta Systems and Chairman ESC and Chairman India IoT World. Uh, we have with us Mr. Subir Dhar, Global Director with IoT Works, the IoT business of HCL Technologies. Then we have uh, Mr. Raghavan Sampath, Director of Business Development at MediaTek. Then we have with us uh, Mr. Uday Dodla, uh, Director, Product Management at Qualcomm. Very warm welcome to all of you. 
and thank you so much for sparing time and joining us for this important session and uh, your interaction with the industry uh, members. Thank you so much. And with this, I just hand over the floor uh, to Mr. Sanjeev Keskar. Over to you, sir. To you, sir. Thank you, sir. Good afternoon. Good evening, everyone. And uh, thanks for taking time to join this session today. Uh, we are going to have uh, very uh, renowned speakers uh, with us today to talk about IoT opportunity. The today's session, I have made a small presentation which I would like to take you through. And uh, then, then uh, we will invite our uh, esteemed guest speakers to share their views and uh, uh, opinions. So today we are going to spend next uh, 15 minutes on IoT, the next big opportunity for electronics in India. All of you know that we go uh, to industry 2.0 where uh, we bought electrical equipment and in industry 3.0 where we had computerization, we had automation. And now we are talking about going to industry 4.0 where we are talking about robotics, we are talking about artificial intelligence, machine learning, and IoT. So we have evolved over years uh, in, in terms of industry revolution, and IoT is the next big thing. So what is IoT? If we look at our conventional electronic control system, then we may call it as an operational technology where we have embedded electronics control system based on microprocessor, FPGAs, and variety of electronic control circuits. And now you, we have on other side, World Wide Web, we have cloud, and we have server farms. And now everything is getting connected, everything is becoming smart. The knowledge expertise, what operational technology, embedded technology has, is completely different than the cloud side the expertise and competency what information technology domain has uh, they have a very limited knowledge of this operational technology so actually iot is nothing but a conduit which connects operational technology with the information technology so it is going to be a connectivity module where the sensors will be processed and then eventually connected by a variety of connectivity mediums like wi-fi dle GSM, GPRA, Zigbee, six low pan, sub gigahertz. So uh, eventually everything will get connected with the clouds and web. So that that's conduit is nothing but IoT. Of applications which are emerging into IoT, then it goes across all verticals. We have home or consumer electronics where smart appliances, home appliances, even your lighting, security system, everything is getting connected uh, to, to the um, cloud. Similarly, connected vehicles, transport, and traffic management system, those are the large applications into transport. Health or medical IoT applications are emerging in a very big way. Elderly monitoring or elderly treatment uh, then doctors' uh, um, uh, connectivity with the patients, they, they are going to be a very common thing of future. In infrastructure buildings, again, there is a HVAC control, there is a lighting control, security control. Everything will be a very large opportunity for IoT. And then the smart city and industrial control is another large vertical where we will see IoT applications. If we have to talk about Indian contest, then in know that government is driving 100 smart city project where you will have uh, smart uh, lighting, smart uh, traffic control system, parking system, uh, garbage management, everything will be uh, connected uh, into this smart city project. And the electric vehicle and connected vehicle is the next big revolution. I'm sure most of you must be aware of program called AIS 140 by government of India where there are going to be all commercial vehicles will be having a tracker system into them so that we can track those commercial vehicles. Uh, smart home appliances, your washing machines, your refrigerators, water purifiers, air conditioners, everything is going to get connected through Wi-Fi or Bluetooth. And uh, last but not the least, the industrial control, 
your smart energy meter smart grid solar pumps these are again going to be very large opportunities in india for iot applications i would like to introduce now to uh, our esteemed speakers uh, we have really happy that we got uh, 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 such a wonderful panel today with us uh, mr subir dhar he is a global director of iot works uh, which is the iot business of hcl technologies he leads the business development for the iot business in india and asia pacific region Hello, he has a strong background into manufacturing and energy utility domain we have mr sandeep narula he is a founder director of atlanta systems private limited and abc systems private limited he is also chairman of electronics computer software export promotion council as well as president of iot manufacturing association we have mr uday dodla he is a senior director business development for colcom india and is based in bangalore in his role uday is responsible for growing colcom snapdragon ecosystem in india he contributes to end to end approach that provides technology tools relationship to help create and scale ecosystem in india for smart devices and iot verticals such as wearables drones smart homes and automotive uday has more than 20 years of experience in the mobile industry and involving in product management handset engineering network development and software development prior to his current role uday is was the service provider industry and with operators and telecommunication infrastructure he has spent lot of time in united states our next speaker is mr raghavan sampath he is presently working as a director for business development at mediatek and focusing on proliferating 5g technology and ensuring 4g technology reaches to masses and he drives various iot applications such as fixed wireless access point smart metering telematics fintech security and surveillance mr raghavan has 20 plus years of experience in business development and sales in semiconductor industry in the past he has worked at nxp freescale atmel and ti in the demand creation roles so welcome all the speakers and thank you for taking time to be here with us now the session will be like this uh, each of our speaker will present about their domain and uh, the, their uh, activities what they are doing in iot space for 8 to 10 minutes and then last 15 minutes uh, we will have question and answer session so gentlemen it is now i will pass it on to our first speaker mr subir dhar thank you very much thank you very much sir thank you very much sir there is an echo there is yeah i i think this is gone now okay thank you very much uh, so i would like to introduce a few words and then maybe i had a prepared a small uh, presentation uh, five six slides which i thought would be of useful which be of use to the audience here and there i have shared some of the some of the observations related to the in electronic sector what are the challenges we are facing and possibly some ideas that may be resonating with you let me share my screen let me just give me a minute uh, is it visible no it is not Sir, even my presentation was not visible. So, how do we do it? <laughs> Can you forward it to me? Uh, uh, I have already it? forwarded to Mr. Vikas. Okay, just a second. uh we have uh, already given all the privileges uh, you are all a co-host for the event and you have all the privileges to the webex system uh, i think uh, but in any case uh, you feel free to just email uh, to v gupta and escindia.com those speakers who have not done it and they want to vikas to do it uh, okay i have i have sent it already to mr vikas uh, vikas mr. will vikas, be doing it can you share anyway anyway yeah, yeah. Uh, by the time the screen yeah, comes sure. up maybe I'll just take up two three minutes about sharing what uh, what we do. Uh, so this is sorry, uh, so this is sorry, interrupt. So this is sorry, interrupt. 
Can you please recent that to me? Please recent that to me. Only a profile. Only a profile. Uh, even you can WhatsApp. Uh, even you can WhatsApp to me or email. Okay, I have already mailed to Mr. Vikas. I request other Vikas. other speakers also. Yeah, I have received it. Okay. 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 Thank you. So uh, while you bring up the screen, I'll just uh, talk for two minutes about the work that I'm doing. Uh, so I'm from HCL Technologies and I lead the business development for India and Asia Pacific region. Uh, we have this uh, IoT business, which we have set up as a separate business unit about five years back. HCL has been very strong in engineering services and we are possibly, I think, number two in the world. Uh, with uh, over 1.5 billion dollars worth of engineering services catering to multiple sectors like semiconductors automotive uh, uh, automotive then other sectors like other engineering core engineering domains uh, be it microsoft or the googles etc that also we provide services uh, in the five years we have largely focused on asset heavy industry sectors like uh, like uh, manufacturing resource and utilities travel transportation and logistics etc okay so uh, now the presentation is up uh, i'll just also share that you know we we have about a team of about 300 plus uh, professionals in the iot business and we cater to to the market sectors in us europe and in the asia pacific region so yeah so now i'll take the seven eight minutes uh, just to put up the thoughts uh, okay so uh, so just to share that you know uh, indian if it is addressed to the Indian or Indian electronic sector for sure, uh, we currently do about 20 billion of IoT business in India based on some government data that I saw. And we just, that is just 3% of the global spend. So there is essentially a huge potential to grow in the coming years. And as earlier Mr. Keskar was mentioning, there is a lot of uh, opportunities happening. And wherever the IoT, IoT is making a great impact, IoT is making a great impact and wherever IoT would go, the electronics would go because electronics is a very important component of the overall IoT value chain. Like in IoT, you have uh, you have got the sensors and communicate in the IoT platforms and then integrating with the business systems. But hardware, the elect core electronic component at the field, which is the sensor device and then gateways, etc., form a very critical component of the overall IoT. As uh, earlier discussed, you just look around any sector, be it manufacturing, transportation, energy, agriculture, there is a lot of things happening, autonomous tractors, precision irrig irrigation, then you have got weather monitoring stations, then in consumer you have got retail healthcare and smart cities as you, as you just heard that, you know, there is a smart energy, smart water, uh, you know, renewables every sector is actually being disrupted or you know significant changes coming because of connected things and that is going to drive the electronics industry to a great great extent in the coming years uh, next because yeah so this just uh, just a thought of reiterating things like if you look at all around us uh, and i have taken a small snapshot from uh, a, a McKinsey article which says the different sectors, whether it be factories, cities, retail, uh, work sites, etc. There is they have given a range of a range of uh, impact, and they are saying that about anywhere between four trillion to eleven trillion will be the impact of IoT across 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 industries by the year two thousand twenty-five. And while we may or may not be familiar with all the industries, but we know that at home, at our home itself, you see how much has the technology intensity increase few years back about 15 years back 10 years back we would not have seen so much of iot at home like today home robots floor cleaning robots is becoming a common feature then earlier if you see in indian context you know fans we would not have ever thought that we'll have an electronic button to speed increase the speed or decrease the speed same way as with water filters earlier we used to have a plain water filter now we have got ro systems which are invested in electronics is electronics then home in home security systems though it is not very very prevalent but it is picking up and and entire systems are built out of electronics only the camera system the switches etc sensor driven etc. and finally we have got Alexa which is becoming very commonplace in every home okay so the message here is that 
IoT is going to pick up significantly. We are just scratching the surface. We have just 3% of the global IoT, which is going to increase. And the moment the IoT increases, along with it, there is a huge amount of electronics that is going to come along with it. Okay. Next, because next, yeah. So I just thought of uh, putting a couple of points here that how are things changing for the industry? Of course, uh, for looking at it from the macro perspective, we find that. Uh, that lot of change of manufacturing shift of manufacturing base is happening and every sector every country is looking at how to have the resilience of the supply chain what i what we hear is that today a lot of automotive companies are having a great amount of stress because they had not planned properly for the electronics right so they they wanted to have the just in just in time approach for electronics and they did not maintain the sufficient inventory now that is hurting them so that is one change that is coming up Secondly, what we what we see also is that, uh, of course, China was was the manufacturing hub and still it is, but a lot of dependency was there. And now a lot of companies are shifting their base to other adjacent companies like like Vietnam, Malaysia, to an extent, India and companies are adopting a plus one approach that we spoke to some consultants and they said that their client organizations are actually looking at not that they have decided to come out of China entirely, but they are looking for China plus one approach, at least for sourcing of critical electric electronic components. But at the same time, what we also see is that a lot of countries are ensuring that the cutting edge advanced electronics, they do maintain the pace within their country. So while they will be sourcing commodity electronics from different countries, but very core electronics, they would like to keep within their The other thing is business, model, business models. Uh, in the IoT space, we are seeing a, a need as well as some of the companies are coming up where it is more of a product as a service, device as a service. I'll come to this point that in IoT deployments, uh, upfront cost is a very significant part of, I mean, hardware upfront cost is a very, is a very uh, financially intensive part. And what we see is that uh, e e means people are thinking about how do we come up with approaches that the hardware cost upfront cost which are borne by the clients actually come down so that in adoption of iot increases that i'll touch upon it again later but that's one thing that we are seeing a change in the business model next because yeah quickly uh, for the folks who who, uh, who are tracking iot space closely what we have seen in the last five seven years or in fact 10 years that uh, the growth of iot has been has been you know come up because of three key factors one is that the emergence of the cloud services cloud and computing technologies there is a lot of growth in that with the likes of amazon microsoft and all and the cost of computing doing the calculations has come down very significantly uh, on the cloud and that is one of the factors second is that even the telecom costs have come down uh, and then third is of course the sensor costs have come down. these are the three key building blocks of an iot and these prices have been coming down rapidly over the years now it is such that we have we are reaching the price point where it is making great sense for it to grow very exponentially while these have been the traditional three things in the last seven years uh, a couple of things what has happened in the recent past is uh, or it is going to happen is about the 5g which when it comes a lot of new applications like augmented reality will pick up uh, where you need high speed of decision making that will come up uh, from the 5g perspective in every sector you know a very very high level of image capture will happen latency will turn that loop uh, mr subir sorry but last one minute please okay 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 uh, fine okay. So, so these are the things that are happening. Go to the next, Mr. Vikas. Yeah. So quickly, uh, the what what the IoT industry IoT needs from the industry are four things. Where the new new things will happen is about the miniaturization. Things of elect electronics will have to become smaller and smaller to occupy less space. Energy efficiency is a very key thing for the battery management, and then reliability of devices, etc., has to be increasing. And of course, core co cost has, has is always a factor. Next, Mr. Vikas. 
yeah these are the quickly summarizing some of the challenges and growth ideas so what challenges we face as a one of the service providers in the industry is we face long procurement times because many of the electronic items are procured globally and if that is happening within the country that will be very good quality and reliability of electronic components has always been an issue especially in many cases in indian context we find that that we cannot be sure uh, of the test certificates etc in many cases we think that the improvement of quality is very important third thing what i was earlier mentioning is about the financing of large it iot deployments the indian electronic industry should also think about if, if it's working with the iot space that how can they come up with a third party financing so that the upfront investments come down and that is mutually beneficial to the electronic sector as well as the iot service provider the growth ideas three three i have identified one is you know it's not just the manufacturing that will make a difference but having the complete ecosystem of of design houses the service providers the manufacturing the test labs education system all that has to be thought through well for the electronics industry to grow and one of the good examples to see is the south korean system and as they say its companies do not compete it's the supply chains that compete against other supply chain second part is the information dissemination and marketplaces see manufacturing is one thing uh, many places can manufacture but at the same time it is about how do we make it a total package to reach to the customers what <clears throat> one area that i would like to refer in, refer is application notes for electronics and the reference designs which are very prevalent from the global manufacturers of electronics that they provide the reference designs and moving from components to kits just mentioned one but it is about how do you move and make it easier and easier for the people who are consuming your electronics that becomes easy finally the last point is if the indian electronics sector has to grow we have to foster a culture of innovation and creation of products okay so we have to find in our society be it the education in the earlier years if if there is a ambience and culture of tinkering and actually picking up the electronic skills i think they will grow up to become product designers product developers and they will come up with newer products and finally these products are going to create the pull in the electronics industry i think that is very important and we cannot change everything in a year but we have to plant the seeds so that in the 10 years time we are having a very healthy electronic sector in the country so with this i end my presentation thank my you, presentation thank, thank you sir thank you sir thank you so and now i request mr sandeep narula to present his point of view so sandeep uh, uh um uh, uh maybe i think it is connected uh, maybe uh, i think it is connected sanjeev ji uh, sanjeev ji okay uh, i think you can uh, move to, i think you can move to my another my yeah, sure. another please allow because please allow uh, to, to, because to take their time to, to doesn't matter take their time if it doesn't matter takes uh, you know 10 to 15 minutes uh, you know, higher, 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 uh, higher you know okay sir uh, you know it's very interesting uh, to know it's very interesting and, uh, to know from them so and, uh, we'll, uh, make a very so we'll, uh, make a very interesting point and okay then dai dodla from colcom to present Uday um I'll be happy to let me um, just uh, see if my... let me just uh, see if my I can share I can share All right can you see my my slides everyone Yeah it is yes yes yeah it is visible Awesome Okay. All right. Great. Great. So while uh, while uh, the you know the uh, the folks are going to talk about how how uh, big IoT is going to be, and that's the that's the title of this uh, of this uh, panel, uh, the focus of this panel rather. Um, I'd like to actually touch upon things that typically don't go uh, uh, don't get a lot of attention, right? And uh, and I'd like to what I what i typically say is i'd like to list out some commandments that we need to keep in mind for iot to actually become big um iot is massive right it's all over the place it's it's here to stay but 
there are some fundamental things that we need to get right uh, with with say, for example, India uh, with keeping India in focus. And that's what I'd like to uh, talk about on the in these slides. Um, so, if if you will, um, the first the first the first slide talks about the the while um, while Subir talked about the the uh, the span the length and breadth of IoT, you know, all the way from smart homes to robots to 5G. There are inherent challenges in IoT. It's highly fragmented and siloed. Uh, one smart home system doesn't work with another smart home system. One smart industry system will not speak to another smart industry system, right? Because there's no standardization in IoT. There are competing bodies. There's IEEE, there's LoRa, there's uh, SIG, the Bluetooth SIG, there's there's um, uh, 3GPP. Everyone's competing, um, uh, you know, uh, to to get their share of the pie, and therefore there's no standardization, which is a big challenge. Connectivity, we uh, IoT relies on connectivity. Right, that's the fundamental thing of the definition of Internet of Things is connectivity. But as much as we uh, we'd like to talk about the virtues of IoT, we notice that connectivity is not ubiquitous. Um, uh, and the fourth big challenge um, of IoT is while connectivity is not ubiquitous, there's so many choices out there. Uh, you have the gamut of 3GPP, right? 2G all the way to 5G. In fact, India still there's a lot of 2G IoT going on. Um, there's NB-IoT, there's Wi-Fi, there's Bluetooth, there's LoRa, and there's probably six more that I haven't talked about, right? There's so many connectivity options, and that itself is a challenge. And the final challenge that I'd like to talk about is uh, that these uh, various legacy networks, as, as we call them, right? That's the stuff that's already there, require a lot of testing, certification, and interoperability. Uh, and I call that as a challenge because without that, then you don't have a true IoT system right in play. Um, um, and this slide talks about how, uh, visually talks about how complex uh, and competing this connectivity is. You know, there's requirements for uh, for connect for uh, for networks that uh, serve high density products. That uh, there's some network that are high throughput some uh, networks that require low latency, for example, 5G. Then there are mobile networks. Um, then there's, there's the problem of coverage. Which network provides the best coverage for all its products? Then there's stationary versus mobility, right? One is better for a stationary product like NB-IoT. One is better for mobility like LTE. Uh, one is short range. For example, Zigbee is short range versus NB-IoT is long range. So this it's highly complex. I mean, this is almost like a, a crisscross, right? You can you can actually uh, uh, try and navigate through this entire maze because all these requirements do come into play in an IoT network. And we can't wish I, uh, I, uh, IoT is is uh, cleaned out and we have a fresh start. Unfortunately, we don't have that luxury. Um, it, it is here. What is there is already there, and it's going to continue. What is new is is essentially going to take its place or it has to interoper interoperability. All the way from what you're, you're wearing you know, on your body, what you have in your home, and what you have in your cities and industries. It is here to stay. It is going to be siloed. Um, it is going to be disparate. And it's, a, of course, going to be uh, very challenging to bring it all together. But with that said, um, IoT is still, as I, as I earlier uh, briefly mentioned is it is it is the one thing that keeps um, IoT together is the underlying concept of connectivity. And it is it is it, in fact the one that's going to drive uh, both personal IoT, commercial IoT and industrial IoT across a range of uh, industries, all the way from smart cities to industries to homes to uh, transportation and uh, even healthcare for that matter. In fact, IoT in healthcare is, is is coming to the rescue of the world as we speak during during this particular pandemic. How, the, uh, you know, the vaccines, uh, the shipments are being tracked. Are they being tracked? Are they being stored at the right temperature? Are they being administered uh, to the right patients, etc. Now, this is just a a, a very 
a standard slide about the evolution of uh, IoT. Uh, we know that IoT is going to evolve, right? It's going to get bigger and bigger and bigger over the next few years. Yeah, it was very simple a few years ago. It's a lot more complex than that. But going forward, the combinations and permutations of IoT and IoT devices is just going to be exponential. Um, now, coming back to uh, what I said about um, LTE, uh, we, uh, 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 our background being um, uh, a big proponent of 3GPP technologies, um, we, we feel that LTE and its associated technologies with both uh, narrow band or for that matter, the high bandwidth applications such as 5G provide um, IoT with a scalable connectivity platform all the way from high bandwidth products such as uh, smart cameras to very low bandwidth static products such as meters. We feel that 3GPP technologies all the way from LTE to CAT M1 to NV1 cater to this range of disparate technologies all being standardized by one body. And this this uh, doesn't stop with LTE. Um, as I, as I uh, said, there is also 5G and 5G NR light that's uh, that's coming to the fore. In fact, it is going to evolve low bandwidth um, applications uh, needing connectivity in the 5G era. While the continuation of um, uh, NV and um, CAT M1 um, continue. And this brings us to uh, my, my second last slide, which essentially uh, talks about uh, the expansion of IoT that we are going to see. Now, we've, we've all said this, we all know it's gonna happen. It's gonna to touch every aspect of our life. And that I think is, is important for us to recognize uh, for my last slide, which talks about what I'm, what I'm gonna call my, um, my nine commandments, because I don't have 10, but my nine commandments of uh, enabling expansion of IoT. One is, we need to pay attention to having standardized technologies being implemented. It just brings out collaboration and economies of scale. We have to stay away from adoption of non proprietary of oh, sorry, we have to stay the course of uh, adopting non proprietary open ecosystems to prevent wall garden approaches. And what I mean there is, uh, again, there are uh, uh, IoT solutions which are very efficient, no doubt that are essentially islands. They're, uh, they're systems unto themselves. They don't really interoperate with, with systems outside of them. And that's not really gonna help scale this ecosystem. The, the third point is uh, rules of the road, as I call them, is a fundamental definition of uh, how you define these, uh, these systems to work in a very reliable and predictable manner. You can't have an IoT system or an IoT network behave very differently than say another system completely different. Um, so a common rules of the road. My fourth commandment is uh, uh, something that uh, maybe is not such a big problem outside of India, but in India, we have to figure out a way of uh, easing uh, the onboarding KYC um, um, paradigm, right? It, it, the KYC needs to be seamless for rapid activation on the network. Um, we also need a very light touch a regulatory regime that, that relies heavily on self-certification. Uh, what this means is we, we, we necessarily uh, uh, do not need a heavy regulated IoT industry. Um, instead, it should be self-regulated, self-certified, and with minimum levels of regulation. Um, it's the sixth commandment that uh, that I um, is really close to my heart is the fact that a lot of these IoT networks are inherently insecure. Do I want our grids to be insecure? Do I want India's IoT networks to be insecure? The answer is no. So we have to have a minimum acceptable level of security defined in some way, shape or form, either by the industry or by the government. My seventh uh, commandment is a common requirements baseline. Uh, let's let's call a spade a spade. We can't have these these wild west implementations uh, that that are currently existing in 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 the country. Instead, a common requirements baseline that is set by the industry, uh, by by um, associations such as yourselves, can can take the lead and say, you know what, this is a common requirements baseline that needs to be implemented. 
Of course, we need to have a future-proof uh, um, IoT network uh, or a set of IoT networks. And one of the ways of uh, ensuring that they're future-proof is supporting uh, things such as IPv6. I, I picked the most obvious one, but we feel that there are a, little, a few more out there that need to be specified uh, so that IoT networks can be future-proofed um, for the oncoming massive IoT uh, revolution. And the last one that um, um, uh, is mostly regulatory in nature is uh, we need to have mandates in place uh, that that allow these IoT networks to operate in in very specific approved and author and uh, uh, specific approved conditions. For example, they can only operate in certain frequencies. They have to operate in a certain power class, etc. All these uh, nine commandments combined, in my opinion, are going to lead to uh, an expansion of uh, IoT in the country uh, to which will ultimately lead to a lot of the uh, use cases that will come into play um, as uh, Mr. Subira has talked about uh, previously. So that was uh, my last slide and uh, that brings me to the end of the presentation. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Presentation. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Uday. Uh, that was very interesting. So uh, we had two speakers. Now I request Mr. Raghavan Sampath to present uh, what our tech point of view on this topic over to Sagan. Is my screen visible and am I audible? Yes, Raghavan Sab, it is visible. Okay. Uh, good evening, everybody. Uh, it's my honor and pleasure to present my views on the next big opportunity. Uh, it was wonderful to hear uh, my co-speakers, Uday and Subhita's views. Uh, so, of course, 10 minutes was too short to cover about the IoT big, the next big opportunity. So what I have tried my best is uh, to give you how IoT is going to impact. Uh, so the, the, the topic today is the electronics industry, but uh, no, IoT is not going to just impact the electronic industry. So it's going to impact all the business verticals in India and the world. So just to give some highlights, what could be the potential verticals or businesses it could impact is telecom sector, automotive, of course, consumer electronics or electronics, electronics manufacturing, uh, cloud infrastructure, software uh, industry, services industry, which is one of the biggest industries in the world, and of course, the overall impact to the economy. So we all know India is aiming at uh, 5 trillion economy. And uh, is IoT or Internet of Things going to play any role or big role in achieving this uh, 5 trillion 5 trillion economy? Answer to the question is yes. Uh, IoT is definitely going to play a very big role for the 5 trillion economy. Uh, today we are at 3.2, 3.5-ish. Uh, this is debatable uh, because there are several reports available, but I take it as 3.2 and 3.5 in between 3 to 3.5 is today's uh, economy. And we need to reach 5.2 or this is the government uh, agenda. It's not my agenda, but I'm just trying to tell you uh, what, what is uh, government planning to do uh, in next three to four years, right? So definitely IoT is going to play a big role. And I, as I already said, it's going to impact each and every industry. So I have not touched uh, every segment, but in my next slide, you will see how IoT is going to impact our lives and our economy and our industry. So as we all know, uh, IoT, stands for uh, Internet of Things, right? So uh, as Sanjeev sir said, as Uday said, so there are several electronic gadgets which are connected to the internet through various sensors for collection of data, remote monitoring, security, surveillance, healthcare, et cetera, et cetera. But what is the backbone of uh, IoT? Internet, internet is the most important aspect of uh, IoT. So if IoT has to make a big impact to Indian, so I'm going to talk about India perspective, what is IoT and how IoT is going to impact India, India and its uh, economy, right? 
So what is the current status of internet penetration, right? If IoT has to prosper, if IoT has to boom, and if IoT has to contribute in a big way like the, uh, the developed countries, right? So we need IoT to, I mean, the internet to be, uh, uh, to be, to be uh, covering the maximum geography and max maximum individuals. So do we, do we have that either fixed broadband or mobile broadband connectivity? The answer is on the third bullet point, right? So the rural broadband penetration, we stand at just 29%. And this has improved significantly only in last three years. Whereas urban broadband penetration is just 51%. And this is, and this is mobile broadband. So it's not fixed broadband. Look at the next point. The fixed broadband penetration in India is less than 10% household, right? So if we need smart homes, if we need uh, remote IoT monitoring, right? We need internet, we need mobile, I mean, the broadband penetration. So what is the crux, what is the key agenda for uh, industry bodies or the government or other, other big giants like telecom service providers, internet service providers, including semiconductor and electronics companies are to ensure that internet is available to every individual or it, is, uh, it has maximum uh, coverage, right? So that is the most important point of our internet of things. And look at the IoT market itself. So the last point on the slide was from uh, IDC tracker. So IoT devices in India market was just 60 million in 2016. And whereas in 2020, it reached to an estimated of 850 million devices. And in next three years, they are saying that this number is going to double, double or more than that. So how, how we can reach uh, 2 billion or 2.5 billion IoT devices in the market and what are the segments it's going to uh, impact is on my next slide. Some of the segments were already covered, but uh, look at the impact what it has for Indian Indian uh, in, in consumers, right? Did, did India ever think that a mobile phone connection can be possible within 30 minutes of your uh, registration? That was possible because of Aadhaar and IoT. So a mobile service provider used to come to doorstep, take your Aadhaar uh, credentials and issue a SIM card and connection within 30 minutes. So this is the kind of impact what IoT is having on Indian economy and Indian consumers. And did you ever uh, ever think that uh, the, the, prolif the, the misuse of the PDS, the public distribution systems, Right, the PTS is for the, the ration given to the below poverty line individuals, where more than 70, 60 percent of Indian uh, indi individuals are staying in rural, or they are under. That's the fact. That's the number below poverty line, and there was a huge, huge misuse of uh, this ration, which has to go to the the, the right, right owner of the uh, PTS. So with Aadhaar, government was, so it's again IoT, right? So there was a PDS terminal in every PDS shop. They used to ask to uh, put your fingerprint and take your picture, validate with the cloud, in the cloud, your data credential, and only issue the, uh, whatever, the, the essentials, right? The commodities and the essentials which had to be uh, provided. Did, I mean, India has taken a leapfrog ahead of other Western countries. Did anybody could think of rural banking? A mobile bank going to a rural village, which hardly has 100 households, they could remit and do financial transaction. That is, deposit his money or withdraw money, even to a lowest denomination. And this was all possible because of Internet of Things or Internet as the uh, backbone. So with this, with this context, I just want to give you a perspective. Uh, what are the different industries the IoT is going to impact or Raghavan, your voice is suddenly slowed down. Can you check your audio? No, my screen is frozen. I'm uh, trying to move to the next slide. So that's why I, yeah, I slowed down my voice. One second. My computer is stuck. So let me stop sharing and reshare. Uh, sorry for that. So can and then now we can uh, start. 
Yeah, this is my last slide. Uh, some of these sectors was already covered by four panelists, but uh, what I'm trying to show you here is the kind of impact IoT is going to have on various uh, industries, right? So I have listed 10 big verticals uh, totally on this slide, and under each vertical, there are at least four or five applications which IoT can uh, penetrate or uh, help, help help our economy or uh, the different use cases for IoT. The only uh, the, the color coding on this slide, not to confuse you too much, is the bandwidth, the amount of bandwidth each IoT application uh, requires. So the red one, which are very few on this slide, is the mission critical. So mission critical or fail safe applications requires 100% connectivity and no latency. It should be always connected to the internet or cloud and it should be interactive. So there are some of the mission critical applications like autonomous driving, uh, traffic control for the smart city, robot, I'm reading out the red color applications for uh, reference. The robotic surgery, imagine a doctor doing surgery with, uh, with guidance from a remote uh, assistance or some uh, cloud cloud application and he is performing a surgery, you need 100% connectivity as a backbone. So these are some of the use cases for mission critical IoT, right? And are these uh, relevant to India? Yes, of course, they are They are extremely relevant for India. And we need, as uh, my co-panelist, uh, esteemed uh, co-panelist, Mr. Uday, spoke about the standardization and also some of the, some of the uh, interoperability stuff, right? Once these things fall in place, once we have the backbone or the infra, these things are going to become a reality. And uh, many of the applications are already real in India. It's not just on the slide or it's not just for presenting purpose. So many of these applications which are mentioned on the slide, for example, smart home, smart city, right? As uh, Sanjeev has said, there are uh, tenders or uh, various smart city projects, right? You want to include smart street lighting there, uh, traffic control, right? And also public surveillance, safety and surveillance through IP surveillance camera and a smart city uh, program. Retail is another big, a big segment, right? Uh, the co-panelists did speak about just-in-time deliveries for the automotive industry, right? So something to retail, right? You need to monitor your shelf monitoring, smart payment, fraud detection. So IoT is going to uh, be there. It's going to have a big impact on uh, industry, and it is going to have a big impact on the economy. So with this, with this, I would like to uh, conclude my presentation. And once again, I would like to thank. Uh, uh, everybody for giving me an opportunity to give my perspective about perspective about thank you mr Bhagavan. uh i now request uh, mr sandeep narula uh, to present his point of view and then we will open for answers uh firstly thanks sandeep for enabling this event of today's uh Equally exciting is the remark and the presentation shared by Subir Dhar, Uday Dodla, and Raghavan Sampar. ESC has been in existence for over decades now. And during this period, the, the transformation of technology and also played a significant role in enabling Indian software companies to be global players. Some of you may not be aware that when council was started, there was a very meager expo of mere $50 million as far as the software is concerned. Which in year 2020 reached hopping $150 billion. Say that ESC, uh, that would be an overstatement to say enabled the member companies, but I would say the support system that had been put in place by council actually played a vital role in making some of the software sector export the world over. In fact, the council played a very vital role in interfacing between the government and the industry, supporting the industry on various issues, be it logistics, be it customs, even export promotions, by having various events and seminars 
for more than three decades. But while India became the leader in software, we lagged somewhere. Like, as we say, in Electronic and Software Export Promotion Council. But somehow, the way we excelled in software, we could not excel in the electronic hardware sector. And that is a fact. Uh, having realized this, and having realized the potential of electronic hardware, especially in context to the IoT, creation of employment, creation of uh, right GDP uh, volume, like uh, it was just mentioned by one of the panelists that uh, yeah, Raghavan Sampar, that to make India closer to the 5 trillion economy, IoT is going to play a very significant and important role. I, I fully agree with you, Mr. Raghavan. Internet of people has actually transformed to Internet of things. With a lot of sensors, playing a very critical role, not only for the industrial automation, agriculture, home automation, medical, transport. And there is none of the industry which can ignore IoT. Autonomous vehicles we talk about, we talk about security system, we talk about anything. IoT has to be there which means that IoT is going to be one big thing before we think that, yeah, time has come. Yes, of course, 2025, we have been talking of, the value would be closer to about 1 billion, uh, 1,000 billion to 2,000 billion dollars. So how do we prepare ourselves to play leadership role as we have done in the software. This was the thinking that was going on in the council. And we realized that we need to have a larger focus on IoT for enabling the industry to become a major player as it be done in the software. We have seen that uh, 5G is coming and I'm very happy to share and uh, know that at least two of the major players in Indian uh, telecom sector are eyeing for the indigenous 5D net, 5G network, which is very laudable. And I think uh, India is going to become a player in that segment also. Government has also realized the importance of R&D and have very dedicatedly focused on R&D by having one agency with a hopping budget of about $6 billion to be spent on R&D. We at ESC have been interfacing with the government on various policy issues. Have realized that uh, unless and until we have a strong R&D, we would not be able to have right set of competition with some of the neighboring countries. Especially after the challenging last year, while we are becoming back to the normalcy, we also realized that the world over thinking has started on China plus one, as Subhidhar also mentioned in his presentation. Now, the whole idea is how to capture China plus one, how to take plus one slot. For that, we need to be evolving. We need to be idea generators. We need to focus on R&D. And there is a stronger need for all of us to have the right vision. I see when we talk of business in India, especially electronic hardware front, we always think on domestic numbers. I think we need to change this thinking. We need to look at the world numbers. We need to collaborate with the partners world over. 
and today we have got many of the interested partners who may be having their strengths either in terms of technology or in terms of market or the ideas and that is how this platform has been brought which can not only give the ideas for the business but also the vision for the business right subir dhar mentioned in his uh, presentation very very important few important things he mentioned reduction in the cost enabling exponential growth the data cost war is across the world is the cheapest in india and even the hardware cost is coming down drastically taking the talent that we have in india i think we need to have set of hardware development and then get into the world market as soon as possible raghavan sampath mentioned about quick kyc that has brought the sim working in 30 minutes based on aadhar uh, authorization or based on various other uh, facilities or the availability of internet i think mtk as uh, company is very focused towards providing the socs technologies at a very reasonable cost we need to take the leverage uh, one of the speaker also mentioned about the reference designs as is done or the right ecosystem i will just share my, my experience with you as far as china is concerned the entire ecosystem that is in place in china which includes the uh, supply chain which includes the design centers i think that has been largely enabled in india and government is also very very positive on enabling the electronic industry in india back where pi schemes have been announced as you all aware uh, whether it is mobile recently we have come out with the telecom pli and now we have come out with the uh, it uh, policy also on the incentives so this gives a great opportunity for uh, my uh, friends from overseas to collaborate with india have joint venture in india be part of the growth not only for india make in india and world to sell and sell to the world i think Uh, this is what i would like to focus here uh, today today uh, how to uh, enable the business enable the business line line before i before i conclude i would uh, i would say uh, my compliment to the secretariat of esc led by mr gurmeet singh very actively supported by mr vikas gupta and the team they have actually transformed the working of the council and i hope that such events and such uh, seminars will be continued and will enable the industry to a great extent with these words i would conclude and over to you yes yes thank yes. thank you sandeep ji what a positive message and what a passionate message thank you very much uh, so now we are open for questions we have industry uh mr subir ji uh, then raghavan ji and uh, uday ji and sandeep ji so anyone has any question please raise your hand or you you can just go ahead and ask your question or put it in a chat box and we'll be happy to answer till the time we get uh, questions uh, uh i have a question for the panel uh, uh ev everyone is talking about that if everything is going to get connected everything is going to get smart then cyber security and iot security is going to be a uh, one very big challenging thing and uh, how how uh, semiconductor companies like qualcomm and mediatek are trying to address this challenge as well as the design companies like hcl how they are planning to address this challenge while designing the iot systems i can go first I this is udai this is udai yeah okay. yeah okay. yeah uh, uh, sanjeev ji you may sanjeev want to you may want to mute yeah yeah 
All right. So we we believe that uh, as 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 I had uh, Inc. Uh, uh, said that security is one of uh, uh, the things that we um, strongly recommend uh, to be the foundational uh, uh, technology in IoT networks. We believe that it's um, it's therefore very necessary to plan from the very beginning of a product. Um, it it can't be something that we can uh, we can we can implement after the fact. There there are two things, uh, Sanjeev, you you asked about. One is cybersecurity. Uh, which is at a at a slightly higher layer than the actual hardware security that that gets enforced at the at the device level. So we should look at both, not either or, but actually and, uh, which means which means that devices and networks need to implement both levels of security, cyber security and uh, device security. In that regard, there are uh, very commonly available uh, semiconductor technologies that enable hardware level security. And it's just a matter of the industry deciding to say, hey, this is important for India and implementing that. Um, uh, the choice is in the industry, in the ecosystem to adopt. It, it, is, it is not a technology limitation. In fact, it is, it is, uh, it is just a limitation of uh, adoption. Thank you. Anyone <clears throat> want to add any other point? Yes, yeah, I, 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 Go ahead, Raghu. Yeah, thank you, sir. Yeah, so to add on to what Uday said, uh, yes, <clears throat> a semiconductor industry or the chip industry is uh, doing everything possible to ensure the end-to-end uh, -end, uh, product security. So as uh, you and Uday rightly asked, whether the security should be at the uh, just the hardware level, software level, or the cloud? No, the answer is end to end uh, because it's connected to internet, and you don't want somebody to play a prank uh, deliberately or uh, uh, not deliberately. And uh, there is a lot of privacy issues, right? You are sending a lot of uh, important data, which is personal data. It could be uh, banking, or it could be healthcare, or it could be controlling your gadgets at home, right? So you need security. Uh, the chip companies do provide a crypto engine and uh, the security crow processors, which is part of the SOC itself. So today, if you look at the uh, the standardization of uh, POS terminals, you have security, uh, all, all sorts of security with the uh, governing council, with PCI, PTS, EMV, et cetera. Uh, similar to the smart metering. So smart metering, the meter itself is uh, a, a tamper. I mean, there are 45 different tampers which it needs to uh, protect itself. So there is good amount of security in uh, metering industry as well. So yes, we need a regulatory body. Uh, we need a yeah, council to Thank you. Yeah, monitor Thank you. this. Yeah, monitor uh, this. Thank you. Yeah, into it. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, in chat box, I am seeing question from Mr. Anup. Uh, Anup ji, we have already discussed about the hardware opportunities in India, like connected vehicles, smart energy meters, smart grid. Uh, so um, we will take it uh, at a later stage. There is a question from Mr. Srikant Gupta regarding the audio, design audio sector. Yes, there is a company, Serena Technology in Bangalore. You can go to their website. And uh, then uh, we have a question, which is the most preferred IoT platform globally? Uh, I think we have two competitors here on the panel. So you can choose techno commercially, whatever uh, best suitable for your application. Yes. Um, yes, so one good answer, Sanjeev. Good, Subir... good answer, Sanjeev. <laughs> uh, one last question to Subirji, and then we'll close this discussion. Uh, Subirji, mm, that, that there are so many uh, embedded design opportunities and uh, 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 particularly in IoT. So a design services company like HCL, okay, how, how you are really going about uh, prioritizing or which application to really focus and how to really go about uh, uh, promoting those platforms globally because you, you, you deal with global customers. So how you really focus on prioritization of these applications? So, uh, so is it the uh, question? Is it the question? Yes, Subirji. No, I meant that is it about the IoT platforms because there is a question about IoT, okay. question about yes, IoT yes. platforms. Okay. No, I'm okay. asking okay. you about IoT platform. Okay. So from IoT platform, let me share one thing that uh, I have been in this area for last close to six years. 
and in the iot space uh, there are about what i heard last is about 400 plus iot platforms in the market okay now possibly the first three four platforms actually occupy something like maybe 70 80 percent of the whole market and what i have seen without we we are totally agnostic about it what i have seen in the last few years uh, the two platforms that are doing uh, very well or most of the work that we also do in this area are uh, microsoft azure <coughs> iot platform and the other one is the aws platform these are the two things uh, which we have seen of course i would say uh, i would uh, i would hope and i believe that in coming months we will also see some indian iot platforms also come up and there are various platforms which are suitable for certain energy certain industry spe specific platforms are also there so like for example there is an there is a platform called c3.ai which is focusing more which is on focusing the energy more on side. the energy side so i'm i'm available so I'm, i mean i'm if available anyone needs, if uh, anyone needs uh, needs a uh, needs conversation a, on that conversation drop me a note or a, or just give me a call we can always have a conversation on that conversation on that thank you subir ji so thank you yes uh, i have one question raghavan and ube both raghavan and ube both okay sir go ahead sandeep a lot of our companies come from msc sector <laughs> we all know that uh, we are at a stage where uh, we are ramping up you know uh, our electronic hardware export had a jump of about 45%, but still we are merely at 45, uh, $12 billion. Uh, in fact, the total electronic import by year 2025 is likely to be $400 billion. So we are going to be net, as far as electronic is concerned, net import country. How come the government has come up with this scheme, but mere schemes cannot suffice this hopping gap and apart from the issues raised like uh, problems found and we have got the solution on supply chain things like this and also the uh, design center reference design center one problem i have seen which is common to many of the semiconductor and SOC company and uh, so that problem is when we talk on commercial terms, the companies start comparing Indian buyer with the Chinese buyer, like in terms of pricing or this volume, this pricing, or the support system that is required in India to be part of uh, uh, electronic uh, in, the, in the electronic race. That somehow is not in place for Indian companies. So what extra do we expect from companies like MediaTek and Qualcomm to enable the electronic companies in India to be embraced and be part, I mean, pick up the gap that China plus one become plus one. This is my question. Raghavan, pele up. This is this is this is you do. Okay, all right. Uh, sir, uh, it's it's again chicken or egg story, sir. Uh, please understand, we were late in electronics and hardware industry. So we are just a consume, consumption country. So probably, as you rightly said, our net imports is going to uh, be huge and government is taking some measures, but it's 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 not going to help us. It, it takes at least probably five more years, five more years to be probably not even uh, reach uh, where we want to reach where China is today. This is an honest feedback. So uh, I am an Indian. I am very patriotic, uh, no doubt about it. But I am just placing the uh, facts. Facts. See, every, Thank cor you. every cor Thanks, Raghavan. Uday? <laughs> no, sir. Okay. No, sir. Okay. Right here. Okay, great. Uh, so thank you, everyone. Uh, thank you, ladies and gentlemen. I now request uh, Mr. Gurmeet uh, for his uh, closing sir. remarks. Sir, Giri, I think uh, Mr. Raghavan Uday? and Giri, I think, both uh, have not uh, and finished yet. Uh, so finish we would like to hear Post, from them. It's a very we would like to hear question. from them. It's a very okay. Question. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah, Raghavan, please carry on. Please carry on. 
So uh, what uh, I was saying is, I see, uh, in order to support MSMEs, startups, and uh, the companies uh, who are uh, just incubators, right? Uh, entire semiconductor industry, including uh, Sanjeev sir and IESA, and there are several forums, we are doing our best. So we are doing our best. And uh, to address your question on pricing, of course, uh, it's, it's a business perspective, and every corporation has their profit and uh, uh, the, the GP gross profits and the guidance from the corporation, right? So I can trust, I can tell you Indian OEMs, uh, because we play heavily in mobile phone and the wireless access point market, uh, they get the same treatment as any other uh, bigger customer in China. And it's not, it's not exaggeration, because we know the pricing matrix, what goes into, because otherwise they can't compete, right? So let us take, uh, I mean, allowing, uh, uh, Lava Carbon, Micromax, who are picking up their uh, business, right? So they can't compete with the Chinese Xiaomi, Vivo, or Realme, etc. If they have a higher pricing and their pricing model is not going to meet uh, Chinese guys, right? So yes, there could be few percent here and there, but not a major price difference. It could be support and price. They are given the same treatment. There is no change in the treatment for that aspect. Thank you, Raghun. Yeah, I'll be I'll be really quick. Uh, <clears throat> so, uh, Qualcomm as a company has been in India since the mid 1990s. So we've 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 known this market. We've, we've invested in this market. Um, in fact, we outside of our global headquarters in uh, in the United States, um, we have the largest workforce uh, outside of the United States in India. Um, so we we are in, in inherently uh, a very um, India based India focused. All our design happens here. Our, our IP gets created in India. Uh, so that's number one. Now, so we're in a way we are contributing back to the Indian economy in terms of uh, doing uh, essentially a make in India, but from an IC perspective in India. The the second thing is uh, we do we have run a, a campaign since 2015 to help uh, startups uh, get incubated. Uh, uh, in fact, we were the one of the first hardware incubators in the country uh, through the Qualcomm Design in India Challenge. And I invite all our um, uh, audience out there who 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 have great products to to come and check us out and uh, and take part in this incubation. Um, so we're doing that. We're also set helping ecosystems um, uh, like the Open IoT Labs uh, all over the country, uh, the NASCOM Center of Excellence, for example, with the with the right tools. So it's not always about cost. Um, it, it is it is also about enabling, um, as you said, the re not only the reference design but the local support, plus the scaling. Uh, what what an MNC can do, uh, us and MediaTek uh, individually, is we can help these companies scale outside of India. And that is what is going to give them volume. In the initial phase, before India ramps up, they need the oxygen, and we can help give them the oxygen. Thank you, Uday, and, and thank you, Mr. Sir, Raghavan. If, if, if Subir is there, uh, can I ask a very quick question? XCL has recently taken leap in the growth. Uh, can you share the secret so that some of our members can follow you? <laughs> Sir, it's a very difficult question for me to uh, to comment on that, which has taken so many years. But one thing I will say that uh, the way I look at it, of course, I think uh, uh, the entrepreneurial spirit within the company is one thing that I always believe that uh, has has contributed a big big amount of it. That we take the initiatives. I think each one uh, each one in the company does take a little bit uh, bets in our own way i think it's a difficult question maybe i have to think and say <laughs> sorry for that you have given the end for the industry yeah? <laughs> great so thank you again everyone uh, i pass it on to mr gurmeet for closing thank you sir gurmeet ji yeah thank you sanjeev ji uh, I think uh, uh, very impressive, a very interesting session that we have today. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Sanjeev Keskar, Mr. Sandeep Narula, Mr. Subidhar, uh, Raghavan Sampat, Uday Dodla ji. Uh, it's uh, really uh, indeed my pleasure to propose a hearty vote of thanks to all the esteemed guests and panelists today. 
and all of our participants uh, joining us, not only from India, from uh, different parts of the world. Uh, the electronics manufacturing industry envisage an era of connected intelligent manufacturing by leveraging IoT and AI to automate the entire supply chain Thank and you. production process. Uh, IoT is fundamentally changing how business operate in the 21st century. Even though business operations globally have significantly evolved with the outbreak of COVID-19 pandemic, the uncertainty and delays brought about the catastrophe, especially in the electronics manufacturing industry has uh, further encouraged the player, players. In an attempt to cop up with a disheartening setback to the industry, manufacturers have been forced to reevaluate their process, workforce, safety, and contingency plans. They have been able to do so by leveraging digital technologies to combat the challenges induced by the pandemic. The introduction of IoT in the field of electronic manufacturing uh, will not change the fundamental process of functioning, but will surely transform the way they are operated and managed. Uh, Sanjeev ji, thank you so much for very beautifully briefing us about what IoT is, where we were, and where we stand today. Thank you so much for being so supportive for the today's session and being with us. Uh, totally agree with Subir that the technology intensity is increasing in every sector, and IoT is going to make significant impact. Thanks indeed for sharing the emerging trends in IoT space. Points well taken, sir. If we need to grow in the culture of innovation in electronics, we have to rely and implement more of IoT products. So we share the huge opportunities that IoT offers and how important is IoT for the electronics industry across all the sector, which are disrupted by IoT and bringing a change for good. Uh, challenges in IoT and the need for standardization is important as very uh, well articulated by Uday Dutla. Uh, your nine enablers for expansion were quite impressive and uh, well appreciated by the audience as I can see from the chat box. Uh, let me, you know, they were so impressive. Let me, uh, you know, for the benefit of our audience, let me uh, re-articulate that. Uh, the one is standardization that enable broad scope of collaboration and economies of scale. Adoption of non proprietary open ecosystem to prevent walled garden approach. Rules of the road for defining dependable and reliable behavior. Easing of onboarding KYC norms for seamless and rapid activation on network, a light touch regulatory regime that self certification ensure the implementation of a minimum acceptable level of security, adoption of common requirements baseline across all IT, IoT verticals, future proofing for massive IoT with IPv6 support, mandates to operate in authorized approved conditions. Very impressive. Uh, Udeji, and uh, thank you so much for sharing uh, those uh, very insightful uh, views with us. As uh, Sampat uh, explained to us, IoT will play a very big role in India's conquest to 5T economy to take India to 5 trillion economy. So impressive to know how IoT is not only facilitating the Indian electronics industry to the next level, but its enormous benefits to the government schemes like direct benefit transfer is really amazing. Its applications in different sectors, infotainment, smart homes, smart cities, retail, asset management, manufacturing, agriculture, health, transportation, and so on is well articulated and explained. So impressive, Sampaji. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Sandeepji, for the kind words of appreciation. Totally agree with you that, that, that the time has come for the electronic sector to be on the driver's seat and replicate our IT success story in electronics. We stand committed at ESC to do our best to support industry's initiatives and would welcome active participation of all the stakeholders under your leadership. I'm looking at the comments posted by the participants, uh, appreciating the vision shared by our esteemed panelists and requesting for a copy of their presentation. So we will uh, rest assured we can uh, please be in touch with the ESC secretariat and we will be ha very happy to share those uh, presentations for your benefit. 
in any case we'll be happy to share the video of today's uh, session on our youtube page so please stay in touch and uh, to receive the link and uh, to follow us on our youtube uh, link and uh, you are most welcome to for any clarifications please please feel free to contact us thank you so much once again for all our esteemed panelists all our attendees today for joining us today evening thanks once again and we look forward to have a similar very interesting session with you as the ministry of it is working on a updated iot policy which will be out very soon and we already plan a session with the concerned officer in the ministry of it uh, who's looking after on this iot policy and we uh, may approach you once again for this very interesting session for the benefit of our members thank you so much very again with this we close this session today thank you again thank you thank you jai hind thank you thank you everyone thank you everyone